Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, Future Tech Archives. Today, we will talk about Joe Biden's plan of promoting electric vehicles in the U.S. market. This will have a great impact on tax credits and incentives helping Tesla and the EV market. So, let's get started. After the departure of Trump, there have been a lot of changes at the governmental level. After this historic change, there have been many speculations about how Joe Biden will change the way of governing the country. Interestingly, Joe Biden recently visited Factory Zero in Detroit run by General Motors and participated in a tire-screeching SUV test drive to promote electric vehicles. This was planned as a major part of the nationwide White House tour. This government wants to promote the $1 trillion infrastructure bill with this tour. Joe Biden is a fan of renewable energy from the beginning of his presidential career. This mission of renewable energy coincides with the production and usage of electric cars. Biden is looking into the future of the U.S. as an automobile manufacturer, specifically the electric vehicle market. For now, this is announced on a policy level, but you never know what changes are made along the road as you are never sure what to expect in politics. So let's get started with the president's vision for EVs in the U.S. and their effect on the automobile industry. Joe Biden's administration has an extensive climate change strategy to be implemented in his time period. The major focus of his infrastructure proposal is to invest in the electric vehicle market. He has also highlighted the importance of technological innovation at the Global Climate Summit last month. But behold, there are still many repercussions and barriers to electric cars becoming widespread. For the owners of an electric car or if you intend to buy one, this video is going to be very important, so follow closely until the end. The federal program is incentivizing electric vehicle buyers and provides them with a 7500 non-refundable tax credit after the purchase of their vehicle. This applies to both electric and hybrid cars which need to be plugged in for charging. The main aim is to reduce the tax liability of a person by the end of the year. The biggest hurdle in this case is that the tax credit is decreasing in the case of many electric car brands. This is the sole reason that Biden wants to revive the program. There had been a suggested cap on vehicle production numbers for these companies. In the case of Tesla, when they reached their 200,000 vehicles producing mark, their credit on the cars dropped by half. Half. The company continued to produce more and more cars and eventually, the credit was reduced to half in the end while becoming non-existent by 2020. On the other hand, General Motors have also hit the 200,000 mark of vehicle production and are aiming to lose the credit completely by March 2022. Joe Biden wants to bring the credit to 7,500 on the purchase of an electric vehicle in the US. However, this credit will apply to individuals who earn less than 250,000 per year. As you would know that Biden wholeheartedly focuses on the Buy America policy in every aspect. This policy benefits company that is making their vehicles in America. On the other hand, this is serious news for the company Ford as they are building their Mac-E in Mexico. Back in the recession of 2009, Barack Obama also tried a similar policy. He created a car allowance rebate system offering up to $4,500 in trade-in bonuses for Americans who want to swap out their old cars for a new fuel-efficient vehicle. The U.S. government is urging consumers and manufacturers to shift from fossil fuel cars. Biden vowed during his presidential campaign to form ambitious fuel economy standards. This can be fulfilled by regular emissions testing for private vehicles. For example, in California, vehicle owners have to take their car to a garage every year. The garage technician measures the amount of pollution coming out of the tailpipe of the vehicle. If the emissions are over a safe threshold value, then the owner needs to get their car fixed so that it can be safe for the environment. It is interesting to know that Joe Biden visited General Motors Factory Zero in Detroit recently. He considers the company to create and sustain an electric vehicle revolution in the U.S. The GM Motors Factory Zero has created $2 billion conversions recently. It is all said to produce many all-electric cars including the famous GMC Hummer EV which is a strong zero-emission pickup truck. Biden praised and appreciated the factory staff and specifically the CEO Mary Barra for revolutionizing the electric vehicle industry. On the other hand, Tesla has been mass-producing electric vehicles for years now. The Model 3 is the most famously American car in the market. But but the president is ignoring the fact that Elon Musk's company is still a strong contender in the electric vehicle market in the U.S. 
In a press conference, Biden mentions that Detroit is leading the world in electric vehicles and you know how critical it is. Mary, I remember talking to you way back in January about the need for America to lead in electric vehicles. I can remember your dramatic announcement that by 2035, GM would be 100% electric. You changed the whole story, Mary. You did. Mary, you electrified the entire automotive industry. I'm serious, you led it and it matters. Many recent videos of Biden have been circulating the internet where he is driving in a GMC Hummer EV prototype. Biden is a strong advisor of an electric future specifically by America. His recent tweet mentions, As a lot of folks know, I'm a car guy. I've gotten the chance to drive some pretty incredible vehicles over the years, but I never could have imagined ones like the electric vehicle I took for a spin today. The future is electric and it will be made right here in America. Biden has also released an updated social spending and climate measure recently. It expands the administration's proposed $12,500 tax credit for zero emission vehicles, which caps the pace of electric pickups at $80,000. The fantastic Hummer EV is expected to be released next year with the price of $99,995 and $112,595. This means that the EV is a bit overpriced for Biden's tax credit. Another version of Hummer EV is predicted to be priced below 80,000 threshold, but it is expected to be released by spring of 2024. Biden also signed an executive order specifically for zero emission vehicles. He expects that half of all automobiles sold in the US by the year 2030 will be electric. Biden specifically mentions that there is no turning back from electric vehicles and that it is the future of all automobile markets around the world. Biden is also facilitating major investments by the federal government for charging stations and other infrastructure. This strategy is specifically to address global climatic change and its repercussions. The other motive is to compete with China, which is leading the electric vehicle market in the world. In a meeting with executives, the president can be seen with zero emissions vehicles staged behind him on the White House South Lawn. He was accompanied by executives from Ford, GM, Stylantis, and leaders from the United Auto Workers Union and members of Congress. Biden mentioned that the real question is whether we'll lead or fall behind in the race for the future, while signing the order. Biden also test drove an electric Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4X at the White House. According to analysis reports, the new EPA rules would save 200 billion gallons of gasoline and reduce 2 billion metric tons of carbon pollutions produced by these vehicles each year. Administration officials also mentioned that the fuel efficiency and emission standards would result in $140 billion in net profits over the entire program. Biden's goals for the future are clear and open up an area of opportunities for U.S. automakers. It also has a major impact on Elon Musk as Tesla is known to be the world's leading and most successful automobile company. We all know that China is leading the EV market around the world and has doubled the number of electric vehicles on the road. Its sales are also twice as compared to the U.S. We have to collaborate consciously towards a greener future. Can these automakers produce 645,000 vehicles for the government? It can be possible and even if they try to achieve some parts of this, it will still be considered a massive hit for Tesla and Elon Musk. Do you know that Joe Biden and the government just revealed why they hate Elon Musk? Stay tuned to find out the exact reasons for this hatred. It is interesting to know that in only 10 years, SpaceX has risen to the top of the industry and became a market leader under the leadership of Elon Musk. It has left behind many established companies in the race. Elon Musk has revolutionary ideas and an out-of-this-world vision. But then, why is the government not supporting Musk in his endeavors? How is internal politics ruining the future? So let's find out why. This is 2021 and you cannot forget to talk about Tesla while mentioning electric cars. Tesla has been the major force for moving battery-powered cars. Every electric vehicle or EV in the market is first compared with Tesla and it has become the gold standard for the market. Some EV startup companies have even tried to copy their business models such as selling directly to customers, making in-house components, releasing expensive models first, then producing mass market models, and so much more. Tesla still makes the best-selling electric car and the star product is the Model 3 car. All of their models display great performance and extended battery life. Even the unreleased products are sold out and oversubscribed for pre-orders. Tesla's EV Cybertruck has been estimated to score more than a million pre-orders despite having multiple delays. 
Tesla is the pioneer of battery research and development with its newest 4,680 battery promising to be a less expensive, extended battery life, faster charging, lesser weight, and being safer. Tesla has established a manufacturing plant in China to produce cheaper cars for the masses. Another factory in Germany is in the process to penetrate the European market. Tesla cars are no doubt known for their performance and Musk's leadership of the EV industry is undeniable. Looking at the other major innovative company of Elon Musk is SpaceX, which is ahead of its competition in every aspect. SpaceX has changed the game for the aerospace industry. Despite all these achievements, President Joe Biden does not hold high value for Elon Musk. In a code conference, Elon Musk also went a little overboard and later mocked Biden using similar insults as former President Donald Trump. Musk used the term Sleepy Joe for Biden, which was earlier used by Trump during his election campaign. For those of you who might not know this term or its origin, it was a direct hit by Trump as he suggested that Biden is suffering from a cognitive decline of mental health. Joe Biden had earlier used unintelligible words which had been attributed to a stutter. Musk used this term after the successful SpaceX's inspiration for a flight carrying four tourists on a three-day orbital mission. The rivalry had started way before this incident. Biden's administration invited all major automobile executives to the White House last month to discuss the shared goal of increasing the production of electric vehicles. At this conference, all top officials from the companies such as Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis were invited. But Tesla, being the largest EV maker in the world, was not invited. It seemed like all the team members were present, but the captain was left behind. One speculated reason is that Tesla's factory workforce is not unionized while Biden is a huge supporter of unions. So, he did not consider Tesla for the conference. After this incident, during a coding interview, Elon Musk told the technology journalist Kara Swisher that Biden's administration is not the friendliest administration and it's controlled by the unions. The vice president of the United Auto Workers Union, Cindy Estrada, fired back at Musk and tweeted, he needs to stop whining and just admit that workers should not have to punch out of democracy when they punch into work. Good leaders aren't afraid of smart workers, but embrace them. It is interesting to know that Tesla's headquarters in California employs 10,000 workers at its plant. The United Auto Workers have made various aggressive attempts to organize workers in the factory. Musk was found to have violated labor law when he tweeted anti-union comments in 2019. The National Labor Relations Board scrutinized Musk in 2018 after he tweeted that employees would lose their stock options if they attempted to organize, which the NLRB contended was an illegal attempt. He was forced to delete the tweet and reinstate a Tesla union organizer that had been fired. Amidst these conflicts, the Tesla shares surged on October 26, the Democrats and Congress were working on a proposed new tax on billionaires. After two days, Senate Finance Chairman Ron Wyden unveiled a plan that would extend the federal long-term capital gains tax to include unrealized gains in publicly traded assets held by individuals with more than $1 billion in assets or $100 million in income for three consecutive years. This meant that in the first year, a billionaire becomes subject to this plan, all their unrealized gains to date will be covered. Elon Musk highly criticized this government proposal and mentioned that this is the start of a new campaign by Democrats to redistribute wealth from the richest Americans. He wrote on Twitter that eventually they run out of people's money and then they come for you. Elon also tweeted, Who is best at capital allocation, government or entrepreneurs, is indeed what it comes down to. The tricksters will conflate capital allocation with consumption. Senator Ron Wyden's plan was supposed to be imposed on taxes for tradable assets like stocks, which are held by 700 billionaires, to fund the expansion of healthcare, childcare, and to renew President Joe Biden's child tax credit. An analyst also mentioned that Elon could face up to $50 billion in taxes during the five years of the bill's implementation. It is not clear if the cryptocurrency is considered a publicly traded asset subject to the annual tax or non-tradable to be only subject to sale or transfer. David Gamage, who worked on the proposal alongside the government, mentioned that some but not all cryptocurrencies will be included in the tax, though it is not clear which ones will be included yet. 
Most of the wealthiest people on earth tend to withhold their financial information from the general public. But on the contrary, Elon Musk is an open book. Musk mentioned on Twitter that he intends to use all his money to get humanity to Mars. In a recent interview, when asked about personal taxes, he mentioned that, I don't actually draw a salary or anything. My cash compensation is basically zero. Elon's fortune has been through stock options, but before they expire, he will have to sell them at a top marginal tax rate of 53%. The rate can go up to 57% in 2022, and most of what he sells will go to the government. The government is furious with Elon Musk's rapidly growing net worth which has soared up to $300 billion, which is the net worth of both Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates combined. This increase in net worth can be contributed to Hertz's record of 10,000 Teslas for its fleet, which raised Tesla shares by 12%. Another success is that Morgan Stanley auto analyst Adam Jonas recently raised his price target on Tesla to $1,200 a share. This one day gain was enough to put Tesla just over the $1 trillion mark. Elon Musk and the government officials have been back and forth with remarks about the tax bill and many other restrictions. Do you think that the government is making attempts on Elon Musk to restrict his activities and future plans? There have been many speculations as the government officials are not in favor of his ideas and progress. Do you think they will get to Elon Musk and make him pay more taxes? So with these questions, that's a wrap for today. Thank you for watching. If you would like to receive updates about more tech-related news, do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Do let us know your thoughts about this rivalry between Elon Musk and the government. What do you think is going to happen next? Don't forget to share in the comments section. Thank you for staying with us.